The objective of our press briefing is to also educate the workers to highlight the issues and basically sounding our voice in looking for solutions and the way forward to make sure that we have decent work and decent work ethics on St. Martin. This week, we have received an invitation as the Windward Islands Chamber of Labor Union to have two participants um, for discussions with the informateur. Um, basically, the informateur is the person that is going to be doing information wrong on the formation of the new government because the people of St. Martin have spoken, the results of the elections are in, and I believe, I truly believe that as a chamber, our only goal and objective would, would be to see a government as soon as possible put in place where the work can continue on behalf of the workers and the rebuilding of St. Martin can continue so that St. Martin can be strong, the workers can be strong, and we can continue on in a social and economic development that will be healthy for all of us here in this community. Everybody knows that um, SMCU had uh, the case from the employees from Cable TV, which where um, the final results just came out now from the Labor Department, where um, the Labor Department denied uh, the master's measure for the employees from Cable TV. Unfortunately, the 10 of the employees um, took the bait and took the pay the, the payout. Uh, so only 18 of the employees are still back. So the 18 employees management have to find somewhere to put them or as I already mentioned, open or reopen the Madame State branch. Um, that is for cable TV. Um, we have some also some situation at uh, GEBE. GEBE is currently um, aiming um, that they have financial situation. Um, we have requested their, their financial audit and uh, we as union cannot see where they have financial situation because uh, for a company to make in 2014 11 million in, in profit after tax and in 2015 um, 27 million guilders. Um, it is impossible that today, after Irma, you're going to tell me that you cannot pay salary increase in 2018 because of a financial situation. But um, the problem at GB is for us, the union, that the board of directors and the managing board, they are constantly clashing. And if government don't pay attention to what is happening between the managing board and the board of directors, something serious is going to happen with that company. Yeah, it's unfortunate to say that uh, um, we have our own local people in position and our own local people cannot work with each other. Sadly to say that, but that is the case in this, in this um, situation. Uh, the company is offering the employees only um, two weeks long sum. So it's when there's two weeks from the salaries, it's 50% of the salary. That's what they're offering <coughs> the employees. But the reason why the company is doing that is because there is an article in the current CLA that the GD have, which the CLA was not negotiated by um, SMCU, that um, after the year 2015, GEBE can decide on in their sole disruption what will be the salary increase that they're going to give based on the financial situation of the company. So that is the article they're currently using to, to offer the two weeks lump sum. So that puts us in a very tight situation where we have our hands kind of tight because there's an article allowing them to do what they're doing. So um, we will be forwarding a letter to, to GEBE stating that um, we have to do some amendments 
into the current CLA, we have to resume negotiations for the new CLA because uh, the CLA was, um, was put on hold based on IRMA. And um, we also have to, we also have to um, put a new appraisal policy system in place, which we already presented to the management. Yeah, so those are the direction we got to go because um, <coughs> this is impossible with the situation at GB. Um, they also have to do something with the hiring because if you have a financial situation, you cannot continue hiring. Um, the company do not have an affirmation plan. The company never did a manpower assessment. So the company just hire people because of the feelings, because of the budget. You have a budget and the budget permit you hire and, and that is not a way to run a company. For you, you must know the functions you got, how many employees you need and how many employees has to fit in each function. GB, as a big company, professional company, don't have that. And we get in some kind of hard time getting them to do that because it seems like it's something the company is not accustomed of doing. So they have a problem getting into the right path. But nevertheless, we as union, we want to continue forcing the hand down. Yeah, so that is the situation we have with um, GEBE and the employees from Cable TV. Hey guys, did you know that now with Telcel, if you accumulate $25 or more within one calendar month, you get 15 more? 15 more? Yes, 15 more. However you want. So I can top up $3 now, $10 next week, and so on until I reach or pass $25? That's right. Get 15 more. Wow! I feel like a 15 again. Yeah. Right. Accumulate $25 or more within one calendar month and get 15 more. Telcel, when you Want more? GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. This year's theme is Press for Progress. And naturally, this theme, as I understand it, came about because of the many gaps that exist, especially on the, the labor front, where men and women are being treated differently, especially in the areas of pay. Um, as far as I have learned thus far, St. Martin is no different. Um, this in itself, seems very odd, especially when we consider that um, in various instances, men and women doing the same job are receiving unequal pay. So this is something definitely um, we as unions, we as um, in our communities must rally for. But besides that, the Press for Progress is also a, time, it's also a timely slogan and it can be applied on different fronts, especially when we consider the draconian measures that have been taken against workers since the passing of Hurricane Irma. 
What do I mean by that? I am talking about intimidation, I am talking about unfair dismissals, I am talking about companies taking unilateral decisions without first consulting their social partners, one of which being the labor movement. And this, in our view, constitutes a blatant disregard and disrespect and the ignoring of the fundamental rights of the trade union. Let us be very clear. There is often talk about St. Martin open for business and St. Martin building better than ever. And, and, and we are busy pursuing international investors to come to our shores to open up companies. Whereas in many instances, it is these same investors, these same stakeholders who are complicit in the violation of workers' rights on St. Martin. So this definitely needs to um, have the attention of all decision makers um, in this country. I would also like to um, extend congratulations to the public workers of Sabre and St. Eustatius who recently signed off on their collective labor agreement with the various unions. <clears throat> it is my understanding that one of the fundamental benefits of the collective labor agreement is that they'll be offering a more progressive year-end bonus for the civil servants. Mm -hmm. And this to us seems very impressive considering that all of us went through a storm and then yet the yeah. unions were yeah. pivotal in securing a collective labor agreement for public workers to this effect. As many of us have taken note of the different reports and accounts of the increases in the prices on St. Martin. Just recently we heard about the medical center increasing their tariffs of um, I think 41 or 43 percent. We heard, we heard about the insurance companies um, guesstimating that in the premiums will increase between 30 and 6 percent, 60 percent. We just saw a, a report by the Department of Statistics which registered an increase in the consumer price index by 0 0.9 percent. And the fundamental question that begs to be asked is what about the wages of the workers? Because if, wages con if, if the cost of living continues to outpace the wages, it will mean that more families will be submerged into poverty, thereby creating more social um, uneasiness and a difficulty to meet um, the basic needs. Therefore, it is very important, very, very important that um, where it pertains to offering real relief to the workers of St. Martin. Because very, pretty soon, with reduced working hours, um, the constant violation of rights, and perhaps insufficient um, social safety nets, it could plunge already vulnerable families into a, um, a worse off situation. Now, I said that to mention that prior to the storm, the Windward Island Chamber of Labor Unions, as well as the, the Wixu PSU Union, were basically championing the cost of living adjustment for the civil servants, teachers, and I think retired civil servants also. Um, and this was done via the, um, the platform GOA. Um, we have sent various um, letters to the, the then Prime Minister requesting to coordinate a, um, a platform consisting of unions and government so that we can develop recommendations as to how we can go about the payment of the cost of living adjustment, which as you will recall has been a contentious issue ever since 2011. If we recall, only half of the 4.3% was ever paid out, and it was indicated that afterwards the, the remaining would have been paid out. Unfortunately, despite all of the increases that, we, that have registered in our economy in terms of inflation, we have not, the discussion has not been had as yet. And this, in our view, is long, long overdue. It can't be that every time when workers talk about collect, um, the cost of living adjustments, we are often given narratives about we can't do it, we can't do it, we can't do it, whereas companies are making decisions to increase their prices, seemingly um, um, with their own interests at heart.
all across St. Martin are switching to a more rewarding experience. The Whip MasterCard Fun Miles Credit Card, better known as My Card. Earn one fun mile for every $2 spent, even abroad and online. This will quickly get you a ton of fun miles to redeem for travel, shopping, food, fuel, and much more. But there's more to My Card. Worldwide acceptance, an EMV chip for extra security, and 250 free fun miles with first use. Switch to My Card today at Whip. Hey guys, did you know that now with Telcel, if you accumulate $25 or more within one calendar month, you get 15 more? 15 more? Yes, 15 more. However you want. So I can top up $3 now, $10 next week, and so on until I reach or pass $25? That's right. Get 15 more. Wow! I feel like a 15 again. Yeah. Right, accumulate $25 or more within one calendar month and get 15 more. Tell Cell when you want more. As you are well aware of, I had a week that I was out of the country from the 21st of February to the 28th. And the purpose of that was that I had to attend the Caribbean Union of Teachers executive meeting, which was a two-day meeting. And after that, I also attended the Education International North America and Caribbean Regional Conference. And this conference was a three-day conference. In addition to that, I had the privilege to, on the last free day, actually, before returning, I got a request from St. Martin to visit IMC the IT um, Regional um, Institute of Technology, and I did that, and I did not regret that. So I will now give you some highlights first of the executive meeting. Of course, um, all of the participants um, to that meeting are the presidents of the various um, units. In that meeting, you, the reports were given by the president, the vice president of the Caribbean Union of Teachers, the third vice president, second vice president, first vice president, and also the trustees and the different units also reported and highlighted issues that they were confronted with and issues that um, had been resolved negotiations that are taking place, etc. So, all in all, um, at that meeting, however, the technical manual for the upcoming 17th track and field, um, the 17th biennial track and field of the Caribbean Union of Teachers, those games um, will be held in Hamilton, Bermuda, as I already in a previous um, broadcast, I indicated the technical manual was handed out and we have as a unit, we can have 40 participants for track and field in the various categories and 10 participants for the swimming. Everything is explained in the technical um, in the technical manual. At the moment, the registration fees would also mean that that fee would cover the ground transportation for the units, the, um, the accommodations, so at the game village, the accommodations, the meals, and everything would be covered. So what do we have to do as a youth unit to participate? Well, in St. Martin, of course, um, we would have to get the teams together for them to select, make a selection of the best of the best and those that can comp compete in the different categories. And then we would have to follow further a list of the names of these students. And it would actually be a requirement to have for five students 
a coach. So with every five students, you would actually need a coach. So for swimming, we would need minimum two coach to attend to, the, to this event. The standards are very high. They are um, the same standards that are used, of course, as a qualifier to any um, Carifta game or the, the, the games that you would go on a higher level. Central American, Pan American. Pan American, etc. <clears throat> and that's why the Caribbean Union of Teachers had decided to brand their logo and everything. Sponsorship, we know that it's very difficult. So most of the Caribbean islands, they receive, um, they receive funding from their government. So we have also requested an initial um, funding for the teams to be able to travel because I guess the largest part of the budget would be for the travel. However, they are looking into the possibility since we were in Trinidad, the home of Caribbean Airlines, talks was um, sought with the CEOs of that particular um, company to see how it would be able to move charters to Bermuda with the students involved. So a charter is programmed to leave if everything go well from Trinidad and Tobago, meaning Barbados, um, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Guyana, those and the, in the south would gather in Trinidad and fly on to Hamilton. And the next one will be moved from Antigua with a stop, immediate stop in St. Martin and Jamaica. This would give, for example, St. Kitts, Nevis, um, Anguilla, the possibility to either um, come to St. Martin or go to Antigua, those that are close by, and then pick up the charter from there. So the coordinations are being worked on, and there are some deadlines that w are put in place so that we can have these teams. The games would be, the date for the games would be the 13th and the 14th of July, which is summer. And it is a great opportunity when you see all the different students from different areas to culturally be involved in this game, meeting other students from the Caribbean and also being in a competitive um, level with these students, forming friendship that would also be something very not unique alone, but very good for our students. It's been said that behind every door, possibility awaits. How much possibility depends on which door you open first. Every day, we help our customers discover the possibilities in their lives. It all starts with a conversation. Scotiabank. Discover what's possible. In my opinion, everything is perfect and you would be great for the job. But I see here that there's a two-year gap in your resume. What did you do? I was hospitalized for mental illness. Oh, mental illness? I've undergone treatment and I have a wonderful family that supports me. Well, that is good news. No, no, it's fine. I'm recovered. We'll contact you, okay? For a better understanding of mental health and what you can do to stop mental health stigma, please go to the Mental Health Foundation's website at www.mhf dash sxm.com On March the 8th is International Women's Day and I would therefore like to send out warm wishes to all the women women in professions professional women women in business women in task force, even to women at home, 
women in all different walks of life, in the religious calling, all different walks of life. We would like to congratulate you, the women, and therefore, with this special day to recognize um, women and their efforts, there are a lot of issues that are affecting women that we would like to um, highlight and bring to the forefront. I know that last year, um, the Y2 hosted a conference um, and basically it would have been the intention to have it on a yearly basis. But nevertheless, um, <coughs> Hurricane Irma, you know, detailed that agenda a little, but I would like to continue to encourage women to inspire, to aspire also, and to continue to build their capacity in becoming, therefore, leaders in whatever area, women in different positions, whether it is in politics, you are in religion, you are in your own business, business development, entrepreneur, whatever you do, strive and try as a woman to be the best, to give it all, and to also develop yourself, carry yourself to the highest level possible. So congratulations to all women, and may God continue to guide your footsteps and your hands, your hard work, your hands in the right direction. So enjoy the day also, even if it is just um, with a prayer, just enjoy your Women's Day.